How about this? Really nice. Mercedes SLS, 170,000. <laughs> but hang on, I've got something a bit more exciting still. Nikon D7000, probably one of the most anticipated cameras for a long time from Nikon. Who's this camera for? Now, this camera is more for the enthusiast photographer, somebody who's had a lot of time taking pictures and wants something more from their camera. He wants to be challenged by the camera itself as well as the pictures you're actually able to take creatively. And the spec really reflects that. Now, this is an APS-C camera, not a full frame, but you've got a change from Nikon again. They've really pumped up their their ability to capture pixels at 16.2 megapixels here. So really upping uh, the game now with, uh, with picture quality. Nikon have been very, very careful about talking about image quality, image quality, image quality, rather than just purely pixel counts and pixel densities and, and kind of this race of having the most pixels on a sensor. But there are other specs too. For example, the top of the camera itself, magnesium plating um, on the, uh, the back as well. So this camera has really been designed with the magnesium alloy plating and the weather seals to be taken outside by the enthusiast photographer and used in those sorts of conditions and come back surviving. In terms of other things that are interesting with this camera, in terms of those interested in spec, you've got six frames a second shooting, you've got a nine stop ISO range. So that goes from 100 ISO to 25,600, a massive, massive range, and getting up there with their top spec pro cameras. You've also got uh, the active D lighting, which is important, six frames a second shooting, 39 uh, autofocus points spread out across the frame. So very important if you're being creative and pushing things to the frame and using wide apertures. You've got a lot of in-camera menu options and the ability to add lots of accessories to this camera. So largely this camera is about starting at the base, you know, aperture priority, shutter priority mode and really working your way up through the camera and through its potential from anything from the intervalvometer where you can do timed frame shots, or ultra long exposures, you can put a GPS unit on it. You've got a nice big three inch LCD screen on the back which has 920 dots in it so you can really zoom in, start to see the detail in the 14-bit RAWs that it can actually shoot, so lots of bit depth in there too. Overall, this is a very, very highly specced camera. The thing is, is it's £1,200 uh, with a standard kit lens, which is an 18 to 105 VR. So it's not a cheap camera, but I think the people who uh, are going to be able to spend that sort of money are going to have demands that, re that really this camera can, can meet. So let's take a look at some of the detail, shall we? Now probably we, one of the most fundamental elements about this camera that people have been interested in is its high ISO ability. Now I want to show you an example here. We're in this, it's kind of a, a, a mid-afternoon in, in the winter and the lighting is, well, as you'd expect really, quite dour. It's rainy and horrible outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera to F8 in after priority mode at 100 ISO. Now if I point that at this absolutely gorgeous SLS here, I'm going to focus on the light I've got a very slow exposure and I've got camera shaking. So what I'll do now is do exactly the same thing again. Here we go. Focus on pretty much the same point. Change that to time of release so I don't actually touch the camera. You've got to get your technique right, yeah? Off I go. It's on a 10 second time. That's one of the things you can actually change about the camera itself to 10 and it's programmable from there. So I've got the perfect, absolutely great shot here. Now, but what I'm going to do is take it off. Just move this tripod out of the way. Staying in the same position to show you, and I'm going to push the ISO all the way up here. Now I can go as high as I want all the way to 25,600 itself, but I'm going to go 6,400. Now the shutter speed I've got now, 160th at f8. So an absolutely perfect shot, no shape whatsoever, 160 f8 in these sorts of lighting conditions, absolutely amazing. So it's quite an ability of the camera. So let's move on to one another uh, very important point to the camera, certainly for enthusiast level, and that's the 39 autofocus points. So what I've done is I've moved position here to show you the effect of what having 39 f points can actually help you with, particularly when the camera is locked off. Obviously waving the camera around freehand, it doesn't matter too much. 
but certainly locked off on a tripod. What I've got here is like a, an arc of cars, and I'm going to set the camera up to shoot a very wide aperture, f1.8. And what this will do, when you see the pictures, when I go from car one to car two to car three, at the distances, without moving the camera, all I'm doing is moving the focus point. You can get very different images, and certainly if you want to shoot something in the foreground, nice and wide angle, and have the leading lines going off, you can pick your point in the frame and actually shoot various different things as you go. So quite an important thing. So here we go. First thing I do, bottom right hand side, I've got this. So I'm focusing on the red light on this S-Class Mercedes here. Take the shot. Okay, now I'm going to move that across just by using the dial on the back, focus on car number two on the back number plate. And then car number three right at the very back of the shot, focus on there. And that gives me the three shots. And this will show you the more AF points, the further spread they are, you haven't got to move the camera around so much, you can really pick your leading lines, you pick your, your points of focus. And of course the thing about picking your point of focus, it really affects your depth of field. So when you've got your beautiful landscape with a boulder going off, you can pick your point much more precisely and much more carefully. And for those people who want to get the most out of the camera, being precise, using the tools that the camera has can make a real difference of course.